Today I'm looking into the Elite Arion Digital Smart B Plus Interactive Rollers. I've covered a few sets of rollers before, but today we're looking into smart rollers. Think smart trainer with interactive resistance, cross between a set of rollers. So with this, you get erg mode, so you can set the watts at say 300 watts, and you're gonna to have to do 300 watts. 400 watts, you're gonna to have to do 400 watts. So you'd stand a workout mode. And also sim mode within Zwift. So if you're going up a hill, these rollers will kick in some more resistance. Your standard set of rollers will spin out pretty quickly, not offering a lot of resistance. So even in your highest gear, you can't get much of a workout. These interactive rollers will offer up to 400 watts at 35 k's an hour and up to 730 watts at 60 k's an hour, which is more than enough for a set of rollers because you really can't get those maximal sprints out anyway without sort of hitting the wall and falling off. So these do offer enough to get a good solid workout. The Arion offers a 5% maximum slope in sim mode. It transmits in Ant Plus or Bluetooth. It has both, but it's first come first serve, like a few other elite trainers. The first one that's connected to, the other one will shut off. So if you connect via Ant Plus, it'll use that and shut Bluetooth off and vice versa. This unit transmits speed, cadence, and power. On the power side of things, this one gets a little tricky. There's three contact points with this unit and the bike. So front wheel and two on the rear wheel. And the variables are, tire type being used, air pressure in the tires, rider weight, and most importantly, having the system warmed up correctly for calibration. It's one thing to be riding along at 200 watts, it's another thing to be riding along up Elta Zwift at probably 260 watts for an hour with it applying maximum resistance. Things get a little warm and the power can separate a little bit. More on that when we have a look at the data, but first, let's get this unit unboxed, built, and let's go for a spin. Okay, the box isn't really all that heavy either, so I'm not expecting a monster of a unit in size here, though the package is quite large. First of all, knife. Actually, I probably shouldn't put that on there because that's what I'm gonna be hanging on to when I'm riding the rollers. Okay, in the box, the roll is pretty much already assembled. Let's get the... Okay, we'll go through that in a sec. Get the rollers out first though. Okay, just a lot of space inside the box, so that's what's inside. Okay, let's tidy this up first. Now, the rollers themselves, okay. So typical set of rollers, three drums and a cable. The cable's tied up around here for shipping. There we go, that frees that up. Okay, two at the back, one at the front, so I'm guessing we're going to open up like this. There we go. Cable route is on this side here. I'll put those in play. Okay, be careful when folding roller. That's about all we have on here. Done. Done, we're in play. That's assembly done, that was very quick. Stability. Yep, no worries at all there, that's super strong. The reason why I'm testing this is when you get on a set of rollers, here's where you uh, put your feet or when you step off them. So that's super strong, happy with that. Oh, we have an Allen key. I don't know what this is for just yet. Um, I'm keen to see what's in this little box. Oh, the power pack. Okay, that's a bonus. We have to figure out where to plug that in. I wasn't sure if this was actually a, uh, a powered unit or a self-powered unit. So here's the Aussie plug, if anyone hasn't seen an Aussie plug. 
It's like a bit of a frowny eyes face. Okay. I still haven't figured out what that's for yet. Manual, we have a uh, bonus months and bonus subscription stuff, my e-training material. But the manual itself, I'm keen just to find out where this little puppy comes into play. So, English second. Okay, here we go. Ah, uh, okay. According to this, it looks like that's how you either tighten the rollers up or make them in the right spot for your wheel length. Excellent, okay, cool. So you can move these into the right spot for your wheelbase. That makes sense of how to change the size of it. So you've got sizings here. I know the wheelbase on the Giant is 1005. This is set to 1004. Brilliant, we won't need to pull out the Allen key for this. Now, given all the unit smarts appear to be around here, I'll take a punt that it is right here. Okay, yep, fine. That makes sense. Now that it's done with that, we're gonna to connect to the My E-Training app and make sure it has the latest firmware on here. We'll have a look at the settings that we need to put on. So, firmwares or configuration. Okay, read the QR code. This is a cool part about the Elite Trainers. They have QR code, so come with me. We shall grab the QR code, as simple as that. That makes life a lot easier than having to enter it manually. We want to connect via Bluetooth, via the phone. Please start pedaling to configure my trainer. Well, this is the, going to be the difficult part. Uh, it's rollers. Uh, okay, challenge accepted. Okay, so this wants to be configured whilst pedaling. So I'm there with a the quad lock. Um, I'm not sure what resistance this is going to provide straight off. Typically on the rollers, you want to be in the big ring so you don't spin out. But given this has got resistance, okay, let's dance with the devil. We'll leave it in the 39, not clipped in. Now we want this thing to be configured. Okay, in normal clothes. Let's see how we go. Okay, so we've found the trainer. Next, um, we have no other sensors at the moment. Skip the sensor connection. Configuration done. Well, that was as easy as that. We just needed to get on top of the bike and get moving. Okay, there is an advanced configuration. Let's have a look at that. There's a calibration wizard option. Okay, picture of the rollers. What we need associated with specific characteristic, the wizard provides application. Okay. Mm, interesting. Okay, so it appears we can calibrate against the Bluetooth or Ant Plus power meter. However, it's now asking me to pedal for 10 minutes. Um, not in these clothes, even though I've got the matchy matchy shoes on. It's not going to happen. But initial ride here, it's all good. Um, just a standard set of rollers, but with extra smart, and that's what I want to play with today. So we'll abort that. We'll have a look at the advanced configuration later on. Power sensor serial, right, okay. Okay, so we're going to get into the uh, the nitty gritty of that. But while we're here, unconfigured, let's go to trainings. Let's go power mode, so effectively erg mode. On rollers, I'm super keen to see what erg mode on rollers is gonna be like. Okay. And turn it up to 200 watts resistance. Oh yeah, there we go. 300 in jeans. I think we're onto something here. 
<laughs> okay, that is cool. It's the first set of interactive rollers I've ever been on. My word, that's a whole extra level of concentration required. I'm going to rip that down. Woo! Okay, cool. We'll leave it there until I uh, go and get changed for my proper session we'll do on this. We'll put this with a Llama lab test. That's very interesting. Typically, rollers I've used for uh, form, warm-ups, leg looseners, etc. And uh, that really got me. That really got me. As soon as I pressed up on here, and it actually grabbed that power to 200 watts, then to 300, I'm really looking forward to using these on Zwift. <laughs> All right, I'm puffing a bit too much of that. Let's leave it there for now. I'll be back in kit, and we'll get this up and running. We'll run it through the Llama lab test. Let's go. Okay, over to the Llama lab test results for the Arion Smart Rollers. Now, I've done the 10 minute warm up and also the 10 minute calibration process with the wizard we saw earlier up against the Fivero Asioma pedals. Now, on this test here with the Llama lab, I also had the Quark on, so we have two sources of data plus the Arion rollers. Let's dive into the 20 minute steady state here. Uh, you can see the flat line there is the Arion rollers itself, so it's reporting 200 watts, but what is it really doing? Well, you can see the other two power meters there. It's pretty damn close. That's looking not too bad at all, within a few watts here and there. When I step up to 250 watts, bit of a separation here of around about 13 watts or so. And then the power starts tracking, not too bad. So in this instance, at 10 minutes at 200 watts and 10 minutes at 250 watts steady state erg mode with these rollers, that's not too bad. Okay, into my sprint. Let's have a quick dive at the sprint there. Things get a little ugly. This unit can provide up to 400 watts at 35 k's an hour, I think it was, or up to 730 watts at 60 k's an hour. Things do start spinning out. Now, this doesn't have a beefy flywheel with a ton of power behind it. It has enough, though. I appear to spin out at about 130 RPM. The two power meters aren't too bad, but you can see there that the rollers themselves sort of struggle to get up above 650 or so just here. So probably not a machine for the big sprinters out there. Now onto the 20 second on, 20 second off intervals we have here on the Llama lab test. Now these look a little different. Let me explain what's going on here. So first interval here should be 350 watts. The rollers are reporting 350 watts. Now this was in the big ring, but they're really putting out around 400. So the accuracy there for that little short interval really wasn't in the game of play. Uh, the Asioma and the Quark agreed, but the rollers were a little bit off. Switch over to the small ring, and it didn't even hit the 350 there. Small ring again at the 450 watt mark, didn't quite hit the mark. So in the small ring, it appears to be limited to around about 300 watts of resistance. Back up to the big ring for the 450 watt one, it sort of topped out around 400. So what I was seeing for the short little intervals at a high uh, roller speed was about 400 watts resistance sustained. So I guess that is what it is. Probably not the unit you'd be choosing if you're doing hard specific intervals well over threshold and well below threshold. So in summary there from the Llama lab test, 200 watt steady state looking pretty good, up to 250 watt steady state still looking pretty good. Sprint, hmm, and then the over and unders there for the 20 second mark, things got a little bit skewy. Um, but look, that is what it is, and if you're doing 20 second hard intervals, Rollers probably aren't the way to go for hard efforts. Leg speed, yes, but for full, full blown watts and putting out maximum power, you'd be going for a direct drive smart trainer for sure. So there's the data from the Llama lab test. Now the next test I put this through was in sim mode, Elpta Zwift, Zwift's replication of Elpta Wes. And uh, this was really, really interesting. Now this unit does go to 5% maximum gradient. Elpta Zwift average is 8%. So it's gonna hit that 5% and pretty much hold it there for almost an hour. It's a true stress test of a unit. 
things can get pretty hot. What happens when things get hot? Well, data gets pretty screwy. Here's what we were seeing. So early on, early on, I didn't recalibrate. I used the same configuration as the calibration from a few weeks back. Maybe if I had have recalibrated at the start, things would have looked a little better. But as the hill kicked in, things were pretty good. But remember, the unit is now applying the maximum resistance and I'm applying about 250 watts. And as things get further and further up the road, the power starts to drift, the power starts to drift. Um, this little section here, I had to pass someone, so obviously swift effect, had to put the hammer down, a bit more of a separation. And as things get really ugly near the end, the power separates way out. So what we're seeing there, the blue is the Favero Asiomas, my source of truth for power. I trust and rely on those. And the purple is the Arion Smart, which was getting hotter and hotter and hotter near the top. And you can see it's separating there. Now I will cut the unit a little bit of slack here because this was no doubt designed many years before Elta Zwift was even born, probably even before Zwift came along. And if you're just riding along on Zwift in sim mode or you're doing erg mode, there's gonna be a bit of rest. This, there's no let up. This is brutal on trainers. My next test in a few days will be to put a fan on the unit and see if we get the same power separation. But for now, if you want true data on a lot of trainers, you really need to cool them down if they're gonna be doing Elta Zwift. Or the workaround is to use a power source that's on your bike itself and away from all that nasty heat that's generated with that resistance. The experience of riding up Elta Zwift on a set of smart rollers was kind of cool. I really did like the natural motion and sway of the bike as I was fatiguing. I was sort of rocking a little bit and the bike was sort of collecting underneath me. If you've ridden up a hill and you start fatiguing, you know what I'm saying. It's a hell of a lot more natural than a rocker plate, which seems to flop to the wrong side. With the bike moving underneath you on a set of rollers, it was a lot more natural. The only thing I missed though is I couldn't get up out of the saddle and stretch or sort of move around a little bit because you can't move your weight forward or back a lot on a set of rollers because you'll be flying off end of the wall next to you. One of the limitations of having a 5% maximum grading is you don't get the variations up Elta Zwift. It's an average of 8 or 9%. It'll drop off a little bit below 5% on a few of the corners. You can feel it really let up, which is a nice relief. But most of the time, bang, it's just in the one single resistance all the way up. Also, the level of concentration required on rollers is a little bit more than a standard trainer because when you go around those corners, you really tend to want to steer the bike. It feels that natural underneath you. Price-wise, these things come in at 580 US dollars, around 800 dollars Australian, and around 500 pounds. Ballpark figure, you may find them on sale for a little cheaper than that, so check your local retailer if you're after something like this. So this unit is definitely an alternative to locked-in smart trainers, be it either wheel on or wheel off. It offers more of a free-flowing experience on the bike, but there are a few gotchas with the uh, erg mode, not quite hitting those massive power zones if you need those intervals. And also that power separation when things got really, really hot. So my recommendation there would be to grab yourself an external power meter on the bike so you can use it outside as well. So there we have it, my experience with the Elite Arion Digital Smart B Plus Rollers. Yeah, I did read that out because it's quite long and I wanted to get it correct. If you can grab a set, jump on, have a roll. It's quite a unique experience. If you've never ridden rollers before, definitely give it a try. It's definitely a skill worth having. Okay, thanks for watching. We shall see you soon.